So how do we move through the stages of a Kundalini awakening, or for that matter, a spiritual awakening, easily? Well, first of all, what are the stages? Now I've seen these stages broken down into five steps, seven steps, 12 steps, 15 steps. But basically we have the steps of recognizing the awakening, understanding the awakening, moving forward with the awakening, opening the processes, and then opening up. I've even made a video on the stages of awakening, very similar to the stages of grief. You know, if you're interested in that one, go look in my channel. I'm not going to put the video up here. If you're interested, go have a look for it on my channel. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what I'm going to say in this video, like all the other YouTubers do to try and program you to get you to watch this. If you're interested, you're going to watch it. And of course, please remember to subscribe to the channel, hit that notifications button. And if you have any comments at the end, leave them. So this Kundalini awakening process and the Kundalini energy stages, Kundalini transformation and moving through that Kundalini. How do we do it? What do we have to go through? Do we have to go through the dark night of the soul? Do we have to possibly risk Kundalini syndrome? Is it an easy process? Is it a difficult process? I'm going to give you the answer. To not have to have any of the negative stuff and just feel and flow through partial awakenings, which is what most people talk about. I've had a Kundalini awakening. My experience of Kundalini awakening, when you listen to them, they tend to be partial risings. Not to put them down, because partial risings can be quite a thing in themselves. But the whole point of a Kundalini awakening, rather than just your Kundalini rising partially, I mean a fully connected Kundalini, getting very close to what we could call enlightenment, the states of moksha, samadhi. How do we do this easily? Well, as with most things in life, the simplest things are the things that most people brush away because they're too simple. They're not intellectual enough. It has to be harder than this. And therefore they don't listen to them. And then they go and seek some very difficult process with many steps and people telling you, oh, do this and that and that, and you never get there. To go through an awakening with grace, to go through easily, we have to do one thing. And that is to step out of our monkey mind, to step out of our programming. And as they would say in Taoism, become the water. We become the water by stepping out of our monkey mind, by letting go of our ego, by becoming the observer of the mind rather than living in the mind. For that mind you have, those thoughts you have, you, your ego, are they you? Says who? Who told you those thoughts are yours? Hmm. You just learned to, over the years, you were told, do this, don't do that, and you were given a set of rules, and you eventually settled into this monkey mind, these thoughts are coming from me, despite them actually all coming from external programming, and they are you. They're actually not you. They're just a program running within your biochemical computer. Therefore, by stepping outside of that and stepping away from the thinking and seeing into a world of feeling energetically, we can bypass all the difficulties. And yes, I am going to tell you how we do this. 
But when we step outside of that, we finally will reach a point where we can start to reincorporate, not the programming, the mental body once again, and that is when we can start to have these amazing visions and shamanic journeys. And we can start to have intuitions that open us up rather than the egoic mind shutting us down. The egoic mind is there, our ego is there, our shadows are there. They're not bad things, they're there to keep us safe, to keep you in this bubble, to keep you safe, to keep you protected. That's the first thing you have to recognize. The, those things that happen to you from your ego, from your program, are not bad things. However, they do keep you in that bubble. So you have to step outside the program to be able to step outside the bubble easily. So how do we step outside the bubble? How do we step outside the ego? Very simply, and if you watch all my videos, you might find, hmm, this sounds like he's told us this before. Yes, I have. To be able to go through the Kundalini awakening process easily, all you have to do is feel your personal space. Where is it? Is it 30 centimeters from you right now? Is it a meter? Is it three meters? What's that personal space bubble around you? And yes, I'm talking about that personal space bubble that when someone enters it, you feel it. Now, if it's someone you like, it can be a nice feeling. If it's someone you don't like, it can be a nasty feeling as they come in. But just open your mind and just become aware of your personal space. Got it? How big is it? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it two meters? Is it three meters? Let's just see if you feel like it, write in the comment and see how big you feel your personal space is. And if lots of people do this, it'll help the community understand where people's personal space reaches generally and how big it can get or how small it can get. So instead of me telling you, let's try this experiment. Write that in the comments, and so other people can come along and read the comments, and they can see the general size of other people's personal space fields. But so connect to your personal space. And then once you've connected to your personal space, just feel, again, we're not talking to ourselves, it's not about imagination, visualizing it, very important here. Any spiritual teacher who teaches you to visualize things is actually keeping you trapped within the program, within the ego. They don't realize this because visualization at the beginning comes from the heart of your programming. So what you wish to do is Feel yourself, feel your personal space, and then feel yourself just behind yourself as though you're, you're standing here. And as I do it, yes, you may feel the energy of this video rise and you may be able to connect to the energy I'm giving off. And now, just observe your mind. And you'll actually see that, yes, there is something there. And you might hear things and you might see things going on within the monkey mind that you are now observing. But if you do not embrace that, if you see that as the observer and you just stand behind yourself, you might find this is a very familiar feeling. A lot of people talk about it as though it's, it's how I used to be when I was a child. Or it's, yes, when I'm in a dangerous situation, then I had this 
feeling of something behind me protecting me. Hmm. Starts to ring a bell, doesn't it? This sensation when you feel it. And it's simply a matter of at the beginning, through conscious awareness, conscious consciousness, staying here as often as you can. Now, yes, you've been living in that program, in that matrix, if you were, of the monkey mind all your life. You've identified with it all your life. You're going to be drawn back to it a million times, and that's fine. And as soon as you recognize that, go back, feel your personal space, come back, become the observer of the mind. And with practice, little by little, faster and faster each time. You're gonna get better at it each time. You're going to start living out here. You're actually going to find you can move around far more. And just live from the sensation of feeling free of the monkey mind. If you get drawn in, as soon as you recognize it, take yourself out again. When you learn to live there, you'll be free of your monkey mind. Your programming will break down. Yes, it may start to fight slightly. That's fine. You just step a little bit further away. It is that simple. And the more you get used to it, the more it becomes what we call unconscious consciousness. So if you've ever learned to drive a car, what I'm talking about is conscious consciousness is you have to concentrate on every single little process you're doing, the mirrors, the gears, the accelerator, whatever, until you get to a point where you can drive without thinking about it. Unconscious consciousness. If you wish to learn to live healthier, breathing, we learn to focus on our breath. We learn to slow our breath down, the inhale and the exhale, which generally in the West is somewhere between four and 10 seconds. Yet in the East, they say a healthy breath would be a minimum of 30 second inhale and 30 second exhale. To be able to get there, again, we have to go to conscious consciousness and consciously breathe in slowly. And fill our belly and our ribs and our chest and count it and practice and go slower every time. And the same with the exhale. Until our breathing naturally changes. And when we do that, stress melts away and disappears, and which is another very useful thing to do. This is why I said I wasn't gonna tell you what was in this video. But it's another very useful thing to do when going through a Kundalini awakening or a spiritual awakening. It's useful for everybody on the planet to do, but very helpful here. So there are two ways to help you. But the first one is the most important one. Just step out of that program that is running in your biochemical computer that you associate as you. It's not you. It's just a program. And by doing this, Every stage of the process will become easier because you no longer have to battle with the ego. You no longer have to battle with the, e the egoic mind, the processes, the second guessing, the subconscious mind pushing against you because you're step you've stepped outside of it. It really is that. Simple. It just takes practice. So you don't need Kundalini Yoga. And you don't need to manage your energy. You do not need to manage your ego. You just step outside. Become the observer. Feel everything. And yes, if you do this enough, you may have what we could call the state of Saturi happen to you. A connection to the unified field of oneness it takes practice. 
And when you feel a true non-dualistic state that everything is connected, yes, it's highly likely that we'll pra with practice, you will reach this state. Hmm. You could pay, congratulations if you're still watching this video, because you could pay thousands to go on retreats, to go on trainings, and they wouldn't even get close to something this simple and this effective to be able to go through a spiritual awakening or kundalini awakening. So simple is the process, yet so profound. If you want to go further with kundalini awakening, check out the link in the description or just go to theawakeningenergy.com. Come take one of my courses, come take one of my trainings, book a private session with me, connect to the energy. Everybody says it's 10, 20 times more powerful, even online, connecting one on one than receiving the energy of videos. And of course, you can also book sessions if you have questions about this, that we can book sessions and we can just discuss the processes. And if not, as I said, just you know, hit that like button, comment on how this feels to you. Do you find it easy to do? Most people find it very easy to do. Do you find it more difficult? Are you more trapped than most people by your monkey mind? Just focus. Personal space. Connect to it. Feel it. How big is it? Allow yourself to step to the side, just behind. Observe. And your kundalini awakening, the stages, every stage will become way easier.